Welcome to AP Computer Science B-Terms. Today we're going to be covering Assignment 4 in Chapter 7 of the Arrays Assignment. Assignment 7.5. Write an application program to read three worker values from a keyboard, then print the average age of those three workers. What I wanted to explain to you was how I put together the chapter folders that we use in this course. Inside the book, you get the book download. Um, you find, of course, the chapters we use. But inside the book itself, we have various chapters that are HTML chapters. So these are the listings that make up what we make the you can download this from the course. These listings here make up what we turn into the different classes inside the assignment unit that we work from, okay? So what I have done in the past and what I continue to do is I go in here, and here, for example, is the chapter we're working on, Chapter 7. There are 11 listings in this chapter. These are all from the chapter itself, and what we do is we make classes out of these. I, uh, what I've done is I right-clicked this, copied it, pulled up um, Notepad, right-click Paste, then I called this Class Ordering, and then called it File, Save As, I called it ordering Java, okay? Then I put it inside the folder. So I did all these listings, 11 of them, and then what I did was I took Java and I opened up this folder. And this is what happened. Okay, I get all 11 files, but they don't all compile. So I can, you know, like, for example, I right-click Add, and I click Compile. That one compiled. I right-click Worker. I click Compile. And it tells me that I need String Info. Now, I know String Info is a method from the Chapter 6. So what I have to do here now is go into Chapter 6 and bring over the string info Java file. See, it says can't in my um, error code here at the bottom. It says can't find symbol. And what I'm looking for is class string info. So I found this in the chapter six stuff. So I just had to bring it over. Some other things that happened. Now, this was Buffin. When I opened up the worker list, it's looking for the Buffin file. Now, I went in all the other listings, and I couldn't find the Buffin file. So, hoping against hope, I went to the Internet to find it, and I did find the Buffin file. So, for whatever reason, they've taken it out, uh, but you need it for this particular section. So, I'll show you what the Buffin looks like, because I, I found it on the Internet. And, um, you see, there was one other thing in here. The other thing I found was that the public class network extends object, this particular class, had inside of it public class position extends object and public class node extends object. Now I had errors compiling these. It told me I had to put them in their own classes, so I ended up doing that. So what I ended up having was this. Um, I took out of the network, I took out position and queue, or node and position, those little examples that you had to have to run it, which is not a big deal. So I added that, and I brought in from chapter six, I brought in the string info, and then I brought in from off the internet the Buffin class that you need to run this program. So let me just take a minute here and show you what the Buffin class is. And um, I pushed this out to you 
uh, this new listing. I put them all in a file and sent them to you like I usually do. But this is the purpose I send them for to you. So you can put them, you can put the blue jay to open this particular folder and use these um, classes for your assignments. That's what it's there for. So I click the open editor. And this is what it looks like. You import the Java IO. Then you um, have private static Boolean temp. Then you had a private Boolean is keyboard. So then there's a little bit of explanation here about the Buffin class. So then you declared um, Buffin and it produces a string with a file name. Then you uh, declare super open file file name. Then you had is keyboard equals temp. So you here you had this error clause in here, exception handling. If there's an error, you know, if there's no file reader file name, this is how you're going to input the new file stream. This is how you're going to get it to default to creating a file if no file exists. This is how you do it with a try catch method. This is basic drift of how this works. You have the string read the line. If you're getting it from the keyboard, if it's keyboard, then you're making the, the user input the information. And then you get rid of the information. You flush the output of the buffer after the input. So here's a try catch for this one. You know, this is a mis one, another thing you build in to catch errors. And we go into this a little bit further on, but that's what that's there for, okay? And then you're just saying, hey, I can't read from this file. There's something's wrong with this. You can have it instead of having it crash. So that's your buffin file. Without this, your programs are not going to work. Okay, so I found it for you, and there it is. Exercise 7.5. Pull that one up. What did we do here? Once again, what are we looking for? We're reading the three worker values from the keyboard. Then print the average age of these three workers. Then we have our class 7.5, or you can call it something else if you like. And um, public static void main string art. We create a new buffin, and we call it buffin, and we declare it as a new buffin to read from the keyboard. So you get the data from the first worker. You're going to call them W1. So you're going to read the line here. So if there's no name for the first name, what do you do? You run it, you say there's a mistake, you run an error. Um, you uh, read the second line of the second worker, but if there's no name, what do you do? Same thing, run the error. Seems like you can copy and paste this stuff, right? Same thing with the third guy, same stuff. Worker W3 is equal to new worker, then the buffin reads the third line. It says, um, if W3 is, is null, get the name. And so you say here, now that we're going to calculate the average. So this W1 here, whatever the birth year is, get birth year. And then you're going to put in this variable sum, the first guy. We're going to add to the sum. The worker two get birth year. Then we're going to add to that sum the worker three get year birth year. Then you're going to divide all of those by three. That's how you get the average, right? You just add them up, divide by three. You don't have to put any formula in there, just do it. Then you print it out. The average birth year is, you know, this um variable plus the average of, uh, then you subtract everything from 2008, okay? Then you have the system leave. 
so what's the error? If there's an error, you want it to print out error data input. And then of course you gracefully leave the system, six system exit. Exercise 7.6, revise the body of the last one method in listing 7.2 to return a string value, that is A, the name of that one of the three workers who has the lowest weekly pay, followed by B, the amount of that worker's pay. Here in listing 7.2 on page 7.4 here, of um, chapter seven is the listing they refer to 7.2. And here it is inside public class op. So we're gonna open up this public class op. And I'm gonna open the editor and bring it in here. Now you notice um, this is different. This says print last one, where this one just says, um, last one. So I think that we're safe in just adding another method without commenting this out. So I'm going to go and just click enter a couple times here. And I'm going to write the first line here. So we've declared public static last one, worker first, worker second, worker third, as opposed to comparable first, comparable second, comparable third. What we're doing here is we're taking a variable called last and we're loading it with the first guy if we see that his week's pay is less than or equal to the second guy. Otherwise, remember this construction, if else, that we did in chapter six. Um, otherwise, the the last worker becomes the second guy. So now we check the, the third worker and we check him against the smallest, okay? So if the third guy is smaller than the smallest, then we name him last, okay? So that's what we put to the next condition. Finally, we put our return statement in. Whatever the player with the smallest salary is, we get their name and we put the person's name in there and whatever their salary is. So that's what that's how you run that. So let's compile it. We could reach the end of the file while compiling. So we need another curly brace there. And then what we see is that um, there's no such thing as C weeks pay. So let's go look at the code in the book a second. Yes, so right, according to the book, it's C weeks pay. Let's go look at the worker class. So I'm gonna open up the worker class. And I'm gonna look for C weeks pay. It's not found, but it needs to be in this class. So I'm gonna come on down. Oh, they made a mistake here in the listings, didn't they? They called them all get week's pay. So instead of changing all the places here in this book, in the, in the listings we have so far, from get week's pay to see week's pay, we'll just do it in our code. Then that'd be, make it easier. So let's get week's pay not C weeks pay, according to these guys. So let's go over here, back into, I believe we're in Compop. Yep, there we are. So we'll just, every place we have C weeks pay, we'll make it, woohoo, get weeks pay. So we'll go, find um, C weeks pay and we'll replace it with get weeks pay.
I'm sorry. Um, they made a mistake in the listings. We were all right. Place them all. So now they all say get week's pay. So let's try to compile it this time. We're great. We did it. So let's close this out. And we're ready to go to the next exercise. Exercise 710. Modify listing 7.3 to print the earliest birth year. Do not store the worker with the earliest birth year, only the year itself. Now, once again, I'm looking at the listing 7.3, and I see it's a class called personnel data. One of my listings here, I have no such class called personnel data, but I do have one called find earliest worker. Let's look at that. Definitely it's a little different, but I can see that this is probably what they meant to use by this particular file. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, instead of modifying something that doesn't exist, I'm just going to write a new file. So what I do is I open up a class called Exercise 710. Let's make a new class. Remember, in this particular exercise, we're not concerned who has the earliest birth year, who was born earlier, who's the youngest. We're just interested in what's, what the year it was, what year it was, okay? So we'll call it public class exercise 710. And we'll make this buff and private. We'll call it its file. And we'll put in it the new buffin, and it's going to produce the worker's text. So here we're going to produce a file. See that? Worker's text. So what does that mean? So either it's going to produce it line by line, or it already resists, and we're going to read it line by line. So here we go. Public void, find earliest birth year. That's going to be at the name of our method. Or actually, our class. Yeah, our method. So we're going to call an integer answer so far. And we're going to put in there integer with a max uh, value. All right, so now uh, we, we've got the worker class, right? So we're going to um, name a worker object worker. And it's going to read from the file. It's going to read a line. So now we take the condition if it's not null, it's not empty. What do you do? So if you got a worker, his birth year, is less than the answer so far, what do you do? The answer, answer so far is uh, the worker get birth year. So that's going to be the year that the worker was born, not the worker, right? So that's how you're putting in the number, not the guy's name. So then you go get the next line. You know, the worker is a new worker, it's file read line. So you're going to do this loop, and um, you're just going to go down to the next line every time you go until what happens, until you come up with an empty. There's no more workers. If your answer so far is integer max value, like it is up here, then you're going to print out the line, there's no workers. <laughs> Because this never changed, right? Otherwise, you're going to print out earliest birth date is, and then whatever answer you came up with. See that? And that's your um, and that's your class. So we're going to compile it. Exercise 
Exercise 713. Add to Listing 7.3 coding to tell whether the workers are increasing order of names as determined by compare to. A sequence of less than two values is considered to be in the lowest order in any case. So the first thing we do is we create a class called Exercise 713, because once again, we don't have a class called Personnel Data. So we're just going to make our own Exercise 713 class. And so we declare it. Now we declare it's a private method. It's called its file. And it's of the class Buffin. So that means it's a, this kind of a file that um, if it's not created, it will create it. And the person who opens it will have to put in the entries. It will produce something called workers text. That's the output of it. So we have a Boolean value called increasing order. And we instantiate it to true. So now we're going to have a method we're going to call find earliest worker. We're going to declare answer so far as of the worker class is going to be a new worker. And it's going to be read from the file. See, it's file read line. Or because it's a buffin, you know, if there's no input, then the user can put input in. So we're going to handle the condition if there's nothing in the file. So if answer so so far get name returns nothing, what happens? You re, you just say there's no workers. You know, so you handle a possible exception. Otherwise, you do what? You uh, instantiate a counter to zero, and then you instantiate variable called data is of the worker class and you're going to make a new worker and what's it going to produce it's going to produce a line in a file so while data get name is not empty what do you do you can put in here if data compared to answer so far is less than zero Data is going to be less than zero if it represents a worker with a uh, smaller alphabetical order. The answer so far is whatever you put in the variable data. So then you're going to return that answer. And you reset the counter to zero. And you put in the increasing order now is false. Otherwise, what do you do? You in increment the counter and go back through the while loop. So it's going to increment until it becomes, it jumps out um, at false here, okay? If the a counter is greater than or, or equal to 2, the increasing order is true. So now you're Data is the new worker, and it's file read that line. In your end, you're going to uh, return whatever answer so far as and get the name, and say this person is first in the list, first of all. Then finally, what do you do? You alphabetize the list. You return increasing order. You return. Uh, public Boolean is increasing order, so you're going to return a true or a false. Exercise 716. Modify listing 7.4 to count the number of workers born in every year, 1920 through 1984, ignoring birth years outside of that range. It tells us that we're supposed to change listing 7.4. Once again, you can see that listing 7.4 here on page 710 is uh, a continuation of the listing 7.3, which was personnel cl uh, data class, which you don't have. But pretty much 
you can copy and paste this whole plat this whole section listing 74 here and replace 10 with 65 and 1960 with 1920 so you have going here from 1920 to nine uh, to 1985 um, that would be your top limit. I mean, it'd be January 1st, 1985 here. That would be your limit, you know, anything before that for 65 years, okay, from 1920. So um, it's the same exercise as this. So you have two static variables here, time, span, and year. You can tell the static variables because they're in all caps. Well, Obviously, 65 is not going to change in the exercise, and it is 1920. So that's what you would do. So what's going on here? So um, you're just going to count, you know, every integer within the time span. All right. And you're going to read each worker data line by line. So here's here's the first line of data. and um, while you, you haven't run out of data, you just keep reading the next line. So you extract from that line the birth year of the employee minus the year, which is 1920. So if the last digit is not less than zero, or the last digit does not, ex does not exceed the time span of 65 years, then you include that worker. If the last digit is less than zero, or last digit exceeds the span time, you're not going to count them. So you just go on to the next worker and continue. Otherwise, you just increment whatever that worker's birth year falls on in and then go to the next line. And so you just print out the line, you know, reading. Yeah, that would be your new file, your new file you call reading. So finally, when you're finished with everything, when this finally comes out null and you're kicked out, what do you do? You decrement one by one all the birth years, how many people are at birth year, and you just print out the results year by year. Okay? Exercise 7.17. Modify the preceding exercise to print the year in all words. Hint, use the unit array plus a similar array for the tens digit. So once again, um, I'm going to add another class called exercise 717. Just because we're going to change the wording a little bit from 716, and I don't want to mess up 716, so I'm just going to create a file called Exercise 717. I'm going to disobey the instructions. So I know it looks strange to you to be declaring variables outside of the method, but you remember that static variables have to do that. We start out with workers text here. However, that's down here because what we're doing is we're, use, we're using strings instead of numbers. So we're going to be saying uh, the units, like it, it's told us in the instructions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, with the dash in front of them. And then the tens, right? 21, 22, 23, etc. etc. So that we're going to be constructing our final string from these variables, okay? So everything else is the same. We have um, we have this is new. And then we get to the string of answers. You know, this increment is the same. However, what we're returning is we're going to be writing it out. Instead of writing year plus k here, what are we doing? We're going to be doing 19 plus whatever the tens year is up here. You know, and then it, you do this uh, formula to extract the tens year. Okay. Then you take 
the unit, which is the individual year. So you take the year plus K, like you did before, subtract 1900 for it, from it, and then um, do a modulo division by 10, and that will um, give you, you know, the remainder, zero to nine, okay? And then you just add the count of how many workers fall in there. And then you bring up a new line, okay? So in other words, it's exactly the same as exercise 16, except you're adding some things, adding these variables along the top, and then you're changing the output down here on this line. You know, once you look at it, you're just dividing, you're just taking this string, you're doing 19, uh, 30, whatever the year is here, you're just computing that, plus the unit, and this is a formula to um, uh, find out what the unit is. You're, you're pulling out, see that particular, um, this is computing whether it's 20, 30, 40, 50. And this is computing, see this inside the straight brackets? That's computing whether it's one, two, three, four, five, whatever, okay? So then you compile it and everything's fine. Exercise 718, improve listing 7.4 to print one more no number, namely the number of workers whose birth years are not in the 1960s. Avoid a crash for such workers. So once again, what do I do to change this? I'm going to open up a new exercise and call it 718, which is almost going to be an exact replica of 716, except I'm going to change a couple pieces of information, and I'm going to add some information to it. So what we're doing is we're adding to this um, listing 7.4. You're going to tell how many years are out of bounds. They're, you know, outside of the range 10 to 60. So what we're going to do initially is we're going to change the time span back to 10 and the year back to 1960. So once again, this is our exercise 716. And we're going to change this to 10 and this to 1960. And another thing we're going to do is we're going to add right under the int count is equal to new int time span. We're going to add a new int called int out of range. We're at right here. So in this particular instance, you know, if the digit's out of range, right, what we do is we just um, go to the next worker and continue. But right here, what we do is we add the out of range incrementer. We're counting how many um, birthdays are out of this range, out of the 60s. So this one stays the same, clear until the end. So what you do, you return S, how many uh, of your variables are out of the range, and you include that to your output, okay? It's just an addition right over here. So pretty much, once again, it's almost the same as exercise 716, exercise 719. Draw the UML class diagram for the count birth years class. We have this count birth years class in here. Now, it gets confusing if you open up the chapter 7 and you see the count birth years is a method inside the class called personnel data. And remember, we've been ignoring this, this class, personnel data. So we're using it differently in what we're doing for exercises than we are in the book. Just so we're not being confusing. So if you're considering this, then you have to use this as if it's a method inside of the class uh, personnel data.
but we're not handling it that way since we've got a class in the listings called count birth years. And actually, if you look at it, it's, it is basically the seven Ford listing. So let me pull this up. Here's this. And here's the seven four listing that we've been quoting so much. It's the exact same thing. Except that this class is called, instead of being called personnel data, it's being called count birth years. So it's going to be different than what you would use if you were thinking about, you know, the chapter in the class. So we're going to look at this and we're going to see um, what methods it's calling from where. So we can see that um, we have some connections in here. Count birth years is connected to what? It's connected to worker. So what method do we have in count birth years that we have in worker? In the worker class, we have the two string method. And we have the compare to string method. So what are we using from the above in class? Use the read line method. And we also use the constructor. Is there anything else we use here? Oh, certainly. See, we use from the system file, we get the exit command. So now we use, uh, um, here's our class diagram. We have, we've made count birth years as its own class with a main method. And um, we've got um, commands from the worker class the constructor new string, the compare to object, and the two string methods. Then from the buffing class, we got the new string method and the read line method. And then from the system file, we got the exit method. So that's exercise 719.